Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Sanitize and disinfect surfaces regularly. This has been the mantra for the past four months since the coronavirus made its presence known in the country. Some experts are now saying that your hand sanitizer might not be keeping you as safe as you think. And the hand sanitizer that you're forced to use when entering a retail store may not contain the recommended minimum of 70% alcohol. We speak to Judy Sunaski, the owner of Blendwell Chemicals in South Africa, for more on this. Judy, thanks very much for your time uh, this afternoon to talk to us about something that I know many South Africans are very worried about. Recently, um, a survey or a study showed that not all of the sanitizers available uh, regularly on the market have the recommended 70%. So how do we as consumers look past advertising, well-known brand names, and the product information on the bottle itself, which can often be a bit confusing if you're not in the know, to find a sanitizer that is really effective and safe? Yeah, well, there has been so much product that has come to market that is not effective. I mean, if you look at the news story that broke, broke yesterday or the day before, we had the story of the children in the Eastern Cape, and when they tested their hand sanitizers, they were found to be completely substandard, some of them coming in as low as 4%. So it's not only what we find in the retail stores, but what is being distributed in the market altogether. So there's a couple of things that um, you can be mindful of. One is buying from a reputable supplier. So we are all required to have our product tested against various standards, depending which industry you're in. So we work, work particularly in the food space, but others might be in the, me the medical space or the cosmetic space. So looking out for those registrations on, on the product is one way of finding um, a safe product to use. Another one is it must be properly labeled. You know, the manufacturer's name needs to be on the product um, so that there's some kind of comeback. And also, it is required that we state what the active ingredients are and the percentage of active ingredient in the product. So it's really, really important that you look out for those things and be very wary of anything that has been repacked because once that process happens, the actual manufacturer has no um, control over what is happening in the marketplace and how people might either be adding other things to it or watering the product down in some kind of way. So when you say active ingredients, what should we be looking out for specifically? Two of them. Um, one is ethyl alcohol, also known as ethanol, or isopropyl alcohol. So both of those are approved by the World Health Organization as effective um, alcohol. So you need to look for those. Those are the ones that are going to make sure you are safely disinfected. And those need to be present in at least a percentage of 70% or higher. Is that correct? Correct. So when you be going to shops, um, many shops or all shops at this stage, um, you are sanitized as you walk in. Uh, sometimes because of recent studies, I prefer to use sanitizer I carry in my handbag because, and I think many people might feel the same because you simply don't know what is in the sanitizers that these shops are using. Presumably they would be reputable brands, but obviously they have to factor in cost as well. I think cost is where the, the significant comes in and where people are tempted um, to, to buy in product because it is much cheaper um, and therefore not properly regulated. So as COVID-19 broke in South Africa um, mid-March, we saw a whole lot of uh, suppliers and um, traders in the alcohol market spring up overnight. And a lot of these people did not understand what um, proper alcohols were that were safe for hand sanitizers. For example, there was a lot of printing grade ethanol sold into the market, and that is actually not safe. You know, your hand sanitizer could, could be putting you at risk if, you, if it is mixed with a whole lot of things that are not suitable for human skin. So that's my next question, because I was speaking to one of our producers earlier and I said we're probably going to be um, a group of people who in the history of time have the oldest looking hands. I mean, none of us wants to be complacent and we want to sanitize regularly, make sure we're safe every time I get into my car, out of my car, into a shop, touch something, I sanitize. But 
I'm also worried about my skin, the safety. I'm sure parents are worried about the safety of their children who are now exposed to probably high amounts of alcohol that's being absorbed through their skin. How do you know where the balance is to be struck? Well, sanitizer, I think, is, in, in my opinion, you need to be using that when there is nothing else available. Mm -hmm. So walking through a mall, the shops, you know, they have to uh, comply with, mm -hmm. with the regulations. But in your own homes, it's not necessary for you to sanitize all the time. Good old-fashioned soap and water is definitely the way to go. And we know that soap works at washing that virus mm -hmm. away. So as much as possible, good traditional mm -hmm. hand washing routines, the ones that we've grown up with and the ones that have been taught in schools is first price for everybody. And alcohol will dry out your hands. So there's there's no way of getting around that. Mm. You know, it is, it, it's a solvent type product. And the result is it takes the, the, the natural fats out of your hands as you use it. So use it only when necessary or if there is not an alternative available. Mm. Judy, just to highlight there, so, um, you know, we are all pretty much forced to be out and about again. I think many people who, who are able to, to stay at home are very lucky in that sense that, as you say, they might not have to sanitize as much. But those of us who are back at work full time, children who are back at school during the days, most days, um, and I'm speaking specifically here about children, are children safe using sanitizer on their hands regularly? Yes. If, if it is properly regulated sanitizer, so you have bought from a reputable manufacturer, then absolutely there is nothing that indicates any harm to children using sanitizer. Mm. The only thing you, you may be wary of is certain people have sensitive or more sensitive skins. Okay. So in the event of, of, you know, of that, then they just have to revert to, to washing with soap and water. Some people have more sensitive skins or they have skin conditions that might really be irritated by the use of alcohol. But overall, is there something that says, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not safe for our children to be putting hand sanitizer on? No, there is not. So it is it's, it's safe for them to use it. When we look at, at sanitization and disinfectant, you know, disinfecting bigger spaces, and I'm talking about workspaces here, um, what should employers be looking at? Um, are regular household chemicals sufficient to disinfect surfaces in the workplace, or do they need to be looking at more targeted products and chemicals? Well, certain ones are. So we know there are certain, certain types of disinfectants that are effective against um, coronavirus. And when it comes to choosing a disinfectant, there are a few things that you need to have in mind. One is, is it effective? Number two, is it safe to use on the particular surface that we are putting it on? Um, and number three, how do we use it properly? So ensure that you have the correct dilutions. So the disinfectant that is not properly diluted can be completely ineffective. Um, our normal disinfectants that are out there, um, a, a, a bleach, um, we have a, another one that, that's called QAC based, so if it's a twin chain QAC, those kind of disinfectants we are shown to be effective against the virus. And normally the cleaning service provider within your organization would have that type mm. of knowledge. So it's not, not simply Keeping a case of the tea, strongest again, is best. I beg your pardon? Sorry, I interrupted you there. So I wanted to find that it's not simply a case of the strongest disinfectant is necessarily the best. No, not at all. Um, it's the right disinfectant at the correct dilution applied to a clean surface. So we, we know all our, our disinfectants are tested on clean surfaces. So having a surface that is not clean that you're putting a disinfectant on can also have an impact on its ability to work properly. So cleanliness is as important as disinfecting. Right. Thank you very much for your time, Judy Sunaski from Blendwell Chemicals speaking to us. And certainly this looks like it's going to be the new normal for the foreseeable future and best practice to get all of those things in place.